I'm delighted to be here hosting the 8th European Alcohol Policy Conference in conjunction with our partners, Eurocare. The theme of the conference is um, Enlightened Alcohol Policy for the 21st Century. And what's fantastic is that we're actually in, in the centre of the Scottish Enlightenment here at the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh. What we're trying to do is really get across the idea that actually drawing on evidence, drawing on rational ideas, uh, being optimistic about the future is something that we can take from our predecessors into the 21st century and apply it specifically to the area of reducing alcohol-related harms. I think it's very important that there should be events like this bringing together all aspects of alcohol-related harm because none of us are actually working uh, completely separately. I'm in the field of uh, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, but an issue like drinking in pregnancy actually fits into a much broader context of drinking in society. How is it that we tolerate these harmful levels of drinking? And why is it that we actually encourage people to drink to have fun? So none of our issues are actually uh, in isolation. I very often think that we're talking about alcohol, we're talking about health. I also think that we tend to forget that there's much beyond uh, health in, in alcohol and alcohol harm. And the social and social economic problems related to alcohol is sometimes forgot, forgotten because we tend to put on the health lenses uh, in this debate. Alcohol harm extends to broader social problems such as inequalities, including gender inequalities. We know that alcohol marketing can entrench gender inequality messages. If we can all collaborate together and work towards evidence-based measures that restrict alcohol marketing and promotion, we will be able to improve gender equity in society. What I'm going to take away from this day is that everything is really connected. Alcohol policy cannot exist without the support of and the interaction with justice in terms of not just of the justice system but a broader, a broader justice which is justice around society and how we can ensure equality of opportunity for individuals going forward in their lives as well as in relation for instance to treatment. What do we need to do to help our local politicians and decision makers implement policy and I guess for me uh, the key issue is about improving our abilities around local advocacy, lobbying, trying to get the public on our side that these policies are worthy of being implemented so that they appear to be less daunting for the politicians and policy makers to implement. There's real potential um, we're creating a wave of change and I, that's why I want to be involved because I see the potential to really improve the lives of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people in Scotland. WHO bases the work and the position on the evidence, and the evidence is clear. So the less you drink, the better, as alcohol consumption and the levels of consumption and the pattern of consumption is clearly related to the harm that it does. Three hundred thousand deaths each year across Europe can be attributed to alcohol. Scotland wants to be at the centre of a partnership of nations taking forward progressive action to turn around rates of alcohol harm in Europe. The main thing I'm going to take away from this conference is the huge impact alcohol has on people's health and well-being. It's important to get people to know that also a small amount of alcohol can cause diseases and harmful drinking problems later in your life. We need policy to prevent this harm and what's really sad for me is that the commercial interests are playing such a strong role on preventing the policy makers from making evidence-based policies. It's quite heartening how bold people are willing to be with taking this message of reducing alcohol-related harm, you know, across the whole conference. I think there's there's a, a good sense of community that we that we can forcefully make the case 
that there is so much that's unacceptable in society about how we deal with alcohol and its effects. Behind alcohol policies there are people and individuals who uh, either suffer from alcohol policies or are affected by the drinking of other people, but you, you can see that behind all the talking there is people there and we need to take care of them. Well, I'm going to go back and going to like, spread the information that I got from here and the hope that I got out of it, you know, uh, back in my community and sort of try to re-energise people, you know. It's uh, very difficult, very, very difficult to try to help people with addictions, you know. I think it's about educating other people. Uh, in my work, GIAT, we do a big prevention and education, get into schools and I think that's got to be the way forward getting them young, getting them in young offenders before they get into adult prisons, because that was my experience. Uh, and it was always about the problem and not about the human being. They, no, nobody ever seen the human being. It was always about seeing the alcoholic or the drug addict. So the more we can educate people, more so people in power, that's a major factor. These events are really good in getting the different ideas and kind of putting um, your alcohol policies in perspective in other countries because everybody does it so different and there's so many different social and cultural issues in different countries and by gaining kind of insights from other countries it really helps you progress in your own country. Maybe we can have uh, some good work at the European level because we are many many organizations uh, committed to this uh, uh, alcohol issues and maybe together uh, we can do something about uh, tackling the problem of uh, alcohol consumption. I feel that there's a kind of equity in a stakeholdership as a, a national movement within Scotland and by the sounds of things within Europe, which I never thought I would see in my lifetime, so it's really quite wonderful. This is not an individual problem, this is a public health community problem and unless all those individuals, all those stakeholders engage with each other, then I think we will lose that critical mass, a call to arms. So I think the key message was collaboration, engage with the evidence, engage with the right people together to understand the narrative and how we can move forward. Just try to move things in the right direction in your own area of what you can achieve. Small steps lead to big progress. One of the take home messages is that everyone in this conference take home to their own settings and the safer message and start helping us implement safer at the local and national level so that in 2050 this guy can live in a much better world when it comes to alcohol related harm. Thank you.